This is the 14th meeting of criminal law. This marks our halfway point through the semester. Commonwealth versus Malone is a tragic case of homicide. Malone, a teenager, and his younger cousin were sitting in an ice cream parlor. The defendant had taken his uncle's revolver from where it was kept, and the victim had gotten hold of a bullet. The defendant held the muzzle of the revolver against his cousin's side and suggested they play Russian poker. On the third trigger pull, the gun fired, and the victim was fatally wounded. Malone was charged and convicted of murder in the second degree. Surely the evidence would support a conviction of involuntary manslaughter. But murder? Malone appeals on the ground that it was error to overrule his objections to the sufficiency of the evidence of malice, that is, of malice aforethought, the distinctive culpability assigned to the crime of murder. The defendant Malone was not playing Russian roulette by the rules. He did not take turns with the victim, and apparently he did not spin the cylinder before pulling the trigger. Evidently, the defendant believed he had placed a round in the chamber indicated here. If he had, he could have pulled the trigger three times without discharging a bullet. Tragically, the round had been placed here rather than where Malone meant it to go. Malone was startled when on the third pull, the gun fired. Clearly a solid case of manslaughter, but murder? The line between murder and manslaughter is drawn in terms of the grand criterion, malice aforethought. Malone was reckless, clearly, but where is the evidence of malice aforethought? In our earlier case of Gray, the blacksmith meant to strike his apprentice. Although he did not mean to cause death, he could be found to have been reckless of the evident risk of doing serious bodily harm. Gray was hanged for murder. In Malone, there is no evidence that the accused meant to strike little Billy. Malone's murder conviction is affirmed nonetheless. The court's analysis paraphrases malice of forethought as including any evil design, the dictate of a wicked, depraved, and malignant heart. This sounds like medieval cardiology. What does the model penal code have to say? Criminal homicide constitutes murder when it is committed purposely or knowingly or recklessly under circumstances manifesting extreme indifference to the value of human life. Recklessness always suffices to establish culpability for manslaughter under the model penal code. And under the MPC, in certain circumstances, recklessness can also suffice to convict a defendant of murder. What are those circumstances? Commentary to this subsection states, the code reflects both the common law and much pre-existing statutory treatment usually cast in terms of conduct evidencing a depraved heart regardless of human life or some similar words. So the model penal code has us translate depraved heart talk into talk of circumstances manifesting extreme indifference to the value of human life. Fair enough. But when does that indifference become extreme? The drafters confess whether recklessness is so extreme that it demonstrates such indifference is not a question that can be further clarified. So 
how is the jury to be guided? Culpability must be left to the trier of fact under instructions that recklessness that can be fairly assimilated to purpose or knowledge should be treated as murder and that less extreme recklessness should be punished as manslaughter. So never mind the depraved heart talk. The court under the model penal code will ask the jury to decide whether a defendant like Malone can fairly be treated as if he knew the gun would go off. Would you convict Malone of murder under this instruction? Thank you.